bit of vlog in vlog inception. So I'm being productive and I'm stretching for a gym session I've got to get in and making sure that the vlog is not got anything I don't want to have in it, basically. Yeah, that's good. I'm back, haircut done, fixed. <laughs> Looks a bit better than it did before, I got messed up, messed up by the guy. Got Luke in the background, working out. Here's a wave Luke. Yay. So obviously time is of the essence at the moment for me. So what I've done is I've taken my six day training week down to a four day training week by taking the, basically the training from one, one session Put it into the other, uh, make it into four days, and that's going to be a lot more time. When we start talking about science and all stuff like that, doesn't really matter as long as the same volume is hit per week. It might have a little bit of an effect, but I've been doing it for two weeks now and really enjoy it. So I'm putting out like really good two-hour sessions, maybe four times a week. So I've just finished that. Back here now. Um, today is clients' coaching call day, clients' check-in day, and I've got a group coaching tonight because I got booked up. Um, with one-on-one -on -one clients over the past um, say year or so and now I'm doing group coaching which will be tonight so I'm going to show you a little bit of that. Hello, how are you? Let me just turn the music off. It's Look at it this way, you only live once, do you know what I mean? It's like I'll push I'll push push really hard now to get this goal done and then hopefully it'll pay back in a few years time but we'll see. You've got one one end of the scale compared to the other end of the scale, you've got one end of the scale where you track your food intake and it be can become obsessive and it can become a problem and you've got the other end of the scale where you need to track the intake to make sure you've got uh, accountability for yourself and for you I think it's quite important to track to make sure you're eating enough. Yeah, I mean, obviously, you, you, some days you're not hitting the calorie goal, and then some days you're going over, so it's like, okay, granted, the next day, um, I want to talk about that as well, because on the next day, you went from the 4,400 calories, and the next day, you went 1,700, so you tried to uh, compensate for it, which is okay in a sense, but it's 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 not okay if it's, if it's a binge. I'll, I'll explain why. It's like, if you're purposely doing it, so you go, right, the 48 hour window of success, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take 25% of my calories because I'm going out tomorrow night or because I'm going out tonight I'm going to take it off the next day. It's purposely done, it's mindful, it's um, it's not done in a, in a guilt fashion. So if you then if you then go binge, you hit 4,500 calories and obviously you've tracked it as well. Did you track it afterwards because you were like, oh shit I shouldn't have done that and tracked it? Is that what you'd... Yeah, so that's that, that's very common. It's normal. So what you've done then is when I, when I say normal, it's it's kind of what people's psyche will do, and it's what I used to do as well. So what happens then is because you've you've guilted into that binge the next day, you're more likely to do more exercise, and you're more likely to try to cut food away. But that's come from guilt, and I want to try and help you cut that away. Like there shouldn't be guilt from food. There really shouldn't be. We should both have a healthy relationship with food. So it's about working through that and getting rid of the the guilt eventually. So if it does happen again, it's gone from every day, it's gone to like once a week to now, when was the last time? Yeah, ages was it? A couple of weeks and so now we're spreading and we're spreading and we're spreading, right? So what's happened now is we've got a good few weeks without actually binging out, which is great. And then what we're gonna what what, what um so it's, yeah so now you you you're trying to remove the guilt by not removing the food from the next day. It's more important to get rid of the the binging than it is to think about losing weight at this point. And now you are trusting the system, so to speak, a bit more, and you're trusting the level of calories. I feel like we we do push up a hundred. You're still in a deficit, um, and 
I think it's more important to not have the 4,000 calorie episodes and to get the calories the same every day. Even if that means 3,000 every day, what happens then is we've got this balance going on. And if you can stay at 3,000 every day and stay the same weight, we were winning a bit more than we were if you were doing four and a half thousand calories randomly. It's now 10 to 7. Um, and I'm just about to do the group coaching. So what I do for the group coaching is I use, um, I don't know if you can see the screen, I use Google Hangouts uh, at present. Uh, I did try Facebook live chat, I think you call it, where you do a group of people and you press chat and it's supposed to call them on in different windows, but it was very un un unsuccessful, so to speak. Um, so we use Google Handouts still. I've been doing this for a long, long time. And as I said earlier on, due to being booked up with one-on-one -on -one clients, now I take the group through what I call um, the empowered life process or blueprint. Anyway, um, so I just click the button. I grab the link from here. I share it with them in a Facebook group and they come in. So you're gonna see that in a moment. First of all, I've just pulled up the notes from the, the coaching call. So basically I go through the different levels of ongoing happiness work um, so I kind of talk about food equals mood and the empowered by eating system to make sure that people have got their hormones balanced and are not excessively hungry all the time and you know at that point is a great position for them to like move forward into basic goal setting and their vision and their whys and then we look at passion and purpose and that's where we are tonight is looking at this bit and then once people have found their passion and they know their purpose in life they can then goal set and have visions towards that um that passion so i'm just back to the group coaching and my computer has completely crashed like apples don't crash why is my computer crashed <laughs> Maybe it's because I've been so busy and I haven't had it off for about a month. So maybe it just needed a restart. Let's hope it's fixed. Google Hangouts over to the guys on the group coaching. Um, seems like it's a bit blurry on your screen, but what will happen now is a couple of these guys will appear on there and we're off. Yeah. First one's joined us. But well, we got like kind of a, an exciting bit so to speak now where we um, we look at this progression and we've got this we've just take we've just taken that confidence thing together and it's kind of like where we spoke about the number we've all got quite high numbers like the importance was quite low um, for Emily but it was high for everybody else but then it's the other way around for everybody else where the confidence was quite low and then we want to make that higher for some people so the idea is to think of things that are going to help you make the confidence higher or make the importance higher as you're going along so then we went through the, the step by step way you've got your food right you've set some goals now you want to find your passion then we're going to find some goals towards that passion and we want to progress towards that passion to be happy on a daily basis then productive towards that passion and then ongoing work towards your own happiness through that passion. Now it sounds a bit hippie and a bit wishy-washy to work it out but then when you take this passion finder which I've sent over to you haven't I? You will see that. Then this this one is quite interesting it's 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 the one that says uh, who are the ten closest people to me? Now you might think, okay, so this person, this person, this person. But then if you put the extra the extra sentence on there and go, who are the people that who are the ten closest people to me that I will always answer the phone to? So then it changes it. So you know when you get a phone call off someone, you're like, Oh, I'm busy and you don't don't answer it. They're not one of them, and we all do that. So it's like, <laughs> who are them people? And if you can write five to ten people down who they are, you kind of really get your inner circle <coughs> nailed and you know who they are so i'm supposed to have a business and i'm supposed to help people and i'm supposed to help with help them with eating and i'm supposed to help them incorporate personal development into being happy oh shit, that's what i do then all of a sudden within a week i've found my passion from this from this page 
and then you can find out that I need to hire a cleaner as well. <laughs> yeah, oh yeah, yeah. So if I hire a cleaner, I'm not going to be stressing myself out. Time to go home. Long day. Um, but of course, as we just talked about on that video, that this is what I do and it's part of my passion. So of course, a long day doesn't matter. So, coaching call done. Um, on a group coaching call, group coaching call done, one-on-one -on -one coaching calls done. Um, all of my client data caught up on, and that's kind of what my main focus was today on this Tuesday. Um, that's took quite a while, and we've had a lot of building work done today. Um, there's only minor jobs obviously getting done in the unit, but they've been done. Um, we had a lot of people here today. It's an awesome day. Um, ready for tomorrow fitness goals were hit did my leg training yeah today was awesome so thanks for listening guys